Happy Bamboo Lab Day, everybody. That's right, we've got a new Bamboo Lab 3 printer that was just released today, the Bamboo Lab H2D, which is gonna take a little bit for me to get used to. As you can see here, I do not have one on hand. I purchased one today, I ordered one of the combo units, so the new AMS plus this larger Bamboo Lab dual print head 3D printers. Uh, there's also a third option that you can order that has a laser engraver and cutter. I have zero desire for that <laughs> built into a 3D printer. I'd rather have those as separate units, uh, but I, I think I really wanna talk with you guys about my overall uh, kind of disappointment with the release today. Uh, let me preface this by saying, again, I did buy one for myself. I'm really excited about the 3D printer. I think it's gonna be an absolutely amazing 3D printer. However, I just feel like it kind of misses the mark for most of the users in the community, and I just kinda of wanna talk about that. Also, I think this is uh, going right back to Bamboo Labs' original release playbook of the X1 Carbon. And we'll, we'll talk about that here as well because it leads right into a more affordable printer. But like I said, in general, the brand new machine, this H2D, I think looks incredible. I think this is gonna be a fantastic 3D printer. They've done a lot of improvements on this machine. Uh, it's got the upgraded linear rails in there uh, versus the carbon rod. Uh, it sounds like there's multiple cameras inside of it, a new lighting system. There's a ventilation option, depending on what you're printing with. I think there's a heated chamber in there, which is gonna be fantastic for printing with some of those more complex materials. And then obviously, I think the the uh, the big one here for a lot of folks is the dual print heads. And uh, that was definitely different than what I was expecting for them to go with. Um, but I think it's gonna be fantastic option for a lot of folks out there that are looking to do multicolor 3D printing. The, the way that they went about it though, I think was just, it's different than what I was assuming based on some of the leaks that we were seeing and just in general how I was thinking it would work, especially when it comes to the AMS system because uh, the way that it's defined right now is if you don't use the AMS or if you just wanna print with two colors, you can load up two spools and then one will go into one nozzle, one will go in the other. And I think that's pretty self-explanatory and it re really reduces the amount of print time and purging that needs to happen. Honestly, for me, really fantastic for most of the multicolor 3D printing that I do isn't super detailed or I just, in general, I'm not huge on multicolor printing because of all the waste. So this will definitely help cut down on it. But I think where the confusion for me came in was when I was watching all the other creators' videos. Uh, by the way, there are a bunch of different content creators that have access to the machines. If you haven't already, go watch a bunch of their videos, especially if you're considering buying it. Go watch a, like there's a ton of them, large uh, creators, smaller creators, uh, like huge tech channels are getting the access to this. So definitely check this out uh, to, to hear what they're saying and how they're printing and any kind of issues that they're running into it. Uh, but uh, where I think my confusion came in was I thought the AMS unit was gonna end up having multiple, like two exit points from the back to go to each of the print heads. Uh, and the way it stands right now is if you're just using the one AMS hub, that's gonna go to one nozzle. So you have four colors that it's gonna work with. And then the uh, software is gonna help you determine what is the primary filament color that it's gonna be printing with. And it's gonna use that on the side spool or the back spool or wherever that goes. So in this case, like uh, if this was, let's say this had, three or four different colors on it. Or better yet, here's a, here is a Lego parrot that I th previously 3D printed in multiple colors. So this is four different colors here, uh, but the primary color that it's gonna be using and printing with is red. So it's still gonna re reduce a good amount of the purging and print time by just having it load that one filament in that one nozzle. But I think in the back of my head, I thought it was gonna be like, hot swapping nozzles for you as you were, or, or hot swapping filament, I should say, as you were printing uh, on that other nozzle. So it, it just, it's a different way of it working. Uh, I'm excited to see how it is gonna work once I get my hands on it, especially plugging in multiple AMS units. So I did get the combo with the new AMS and I believe they said you can use the old AMS on this as well. So I'll, I'm gonna take one of my old AMSs and plug that in and see how that compares with all that. So that's potentially really cool. The uh, the other big factor with all of this, I think everybody was really holding their breath for a larger Bamboo Lab 3D printer. I know I was. I mean, the build volume, basic build volume on these uh, two machines here, or the the P series and the X series, and even the A1, 
have become pretty good, but it's very limiting, especially if you're wanting to do helmets or other cosplay things or just larger in general 3D prints. So we are getting a bigger build volume and I think it is a bit misleading, <laughs> even in their release video where they're saying the build volume is what, 350 by 325 by 320, when in reality, it's not 350. It is, uh, if you're printing with one head, yeah, it's 325 by 320 by 325 if you're printing with just a single of the print heads. And then if you're using both print heads, it's even gonna reduce it even further to 300 by 325 by 300 millimeters. So yes, the overall build volume is 350 in one of the directions. However, you can't actually use the 350 as far as I know, even with a single print head, it's really 325 is the max that you can go with a single. And then it's 300 for the duel. Um, it's definitely not as large as I was hoping for. I was really, really and truly hoping that they were gonna do a larger, like a K2 plus, or uh, honestly, I'm gonna see, and I probably will be able to print a lot larger helmets and things on this, and I'll probably be very happy with it. Again, I just, I think from my standpoint, and I know from a lot of other folks in the community, we're hoping for something slightly larger. And with that, uh, all this cool tech that they packed into it is obviously the huge, uh, the price point for this. So the cheapest option for just the two print heads comes in at what, $1,900. And then the the combo with the AMS system comes in at $2,200, which for me after taxes and shipping came to, I think $2,500. And then the third option that has all the laser engraving and all that is even more expensive coming in at, I think, $2,800. And it could be potentially even more expensive depending on if you buy the higher wattage laser and all that other craziness that's with that. I, I'm kind of just avoiding that whole thing in general. I think for me, it's really just the printer itself that I'm interested in, not all the other things. But uh, again, the, the pricing of that was to be expected. I think was going to be around 2000 was accurate. Um, I just, I, I feel like I was hoping for something more like a P1S or P1P that they were also going to be rolling out. And I think that's where I'm. my mind is going is with this rollout of this release, maybe they're doing what they did with the X1 Carbon, where they initially launched the X1 Carbon. And then later this year, we'll maybe see a simplified version of this new HD2 or H2D3 printer with maybe just a single print head that does utilize maybe that full 350 build volume because it doesn't need the the extra space for the two nozzles. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it will be a little bit more affordable for most of the maker user community because Bamboo Lab up until like, na like now, just now, uh, has been fairly, in my mind, like right prop like position themselves not with some of the crealities and elgus and any cubics no we're, we're, they're going to make a nicer machine it's going to cost a little bit more but you're going to get more and it's going to work really well and they're going to put more investment into it uh and then but it's it's not as expensive as the prusas which we've all seen or an ulti maker or anything like that which is which has been fantastic which is i i think why they've been so widely adopted but when you get into the plus two thousand dollar price range it really, I think, starts to limit who's this machine gonna be for. It's definitely not for the hobbyist in my mind. It's really more for geared towards the prosumer side of things or maybe the EDU side of things with this new 3D printer. So I'm really hoping in the next like six months, we're gonna see a stripped down version that they're starting to offer that maybe is missing some of the bells and whistles that we're seeing on the H. D2 or the H2D, man, I'm, I'm never, it's going to be so hard to get this new naming convention right, uh, but is a, a good bit more affordable and maybe gives us that little bit more build volume because I don't know at this point if they're going to go and build something like a K2 Plus that's 350 by 350 by 350 and make an entirely new product skew type thing that they're going to start trying to support. I also want to mention that on their uh, page for the printer, they do talk about an offline mode that you can do completely offline for the new 3D printer, which is 
fantastic to hear that they've they've heard some of the feedback from the community are and are looking to try and provide options to address some of the concerns that were there coming from myself and others. Uh, the other interesting tidbit about that is they also show what slicers are supported by that, and Orca Slicer is oddly enough excluded from that list. So that was a little interesting to see. Uh, one last thing I wanted to mention is. Uh, what is so funny to myself that I was thinking of today is Creality, of all people, I feel like had a huge opportunity to come out swinging with their K2 Plus and just sort of like if they just spent more time fine tuning and testing that before releasing it, I would be shouting off the rooftops because that thing printed amazing when it worked well, but then I had absolutely a horrendous time with it. And at a price point of $1,500, it was a huge build volume. It printed incredibly fast. The print quality looked fairly good for what it was out of the box there without any tooting of their profiles. Their CFS system worked fantastic. It was easy to get into and swap things out. And uh, if, if any kind of repairs were needed in that compared to the original Bamboo Lab AMS, it just feels like they fumbled so bad with that printer and its release when they could have been like ha so well positioned for today to have another option for the community to go with that wasn't a bamboo lab printer that had the bigger build volume that had the speed uh, that could still do multicolor and printed really well. Uh, it's just, it's, it's not there. Like I said, I think the new H2D is going to be a fantastic 3d printer. I got, I, as soon as I get my hands on it, I will be showing it off here, doing some prints, running some tests with it, hopefully not breaking any glass doors or anything like that, uh, and showing exactly what I can do with that 3D printer and the larger build volume and some of the multicolor options with its color swapping dual nozzles. I'm honestly kind of excited to see how well that all works. It's definitely an interesting setup that I wasn't necessarily expecting. Uh, it's not a horrible thing. It hopefully just means we all have to wait just a little bit longer to get to what we're all, I think, really hoping for, which is just a larger P1P, a P1S with a better screen here, which is why, you know, I'm using the big tree touchscreen over whatever this is. I mean, heck, just put the A1 screen on these larger machines and call it a day. And I would be thrilled, absolutely thrilled with one of those printers. Uh, I just wanted to make this video. It was one of those things that's in the back of my head. I figured I'd make it and share it with you guys real quick. Uh, definitely check out a whole bunch of the other creators that are out there with their uh, new 3D printer and see what it's like. If you're interested in picking one up, I will obviously have an affiliate link down below to help support the channel, help me pay for that 3D printer. Hopefully not have my wife leave me after she finds out that I've spent uh, an incredible amount of money on that 3D printer. <laughs> But uh, I just want to say thanks so much for watching. I've got a Patreon if you want to help support the channel. I've got some fun stuff over there. Uh, but thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.